All right, so let's get started with our hands-on with Kafka and Spark Streaming. As part of this exercise, what we are going to do is we are going to count the words that are coming from the Kafka topic every 10 seconds. There are three steps to it. The first part is first, we will be producing the data to a Kafka topic, which is publishing a stream of data to Kafka topic. Usually, somebody else is producing the messages and you have to do the analytics on top of it. But here, since we don't have a predefined stream, we will learn to create our own stream. Second is where we will be doing the actual work, whereby we'll consume the data from the Kafka topic creating the created in the previous step. And then at a certain batch interval, say two seconds, we will be consuming the data from the Kafka topic. And then print the number of words consumed or processed. All right, so let's get started. And here is the scalar code. So you can click on the scalar code and this will basically be available inside CloudX Lab Big Data Repository, inside Spark, Examples, Streaming, and Word Count Kafka. Okay, so the important part is that you can find it on our public GitHub repository at this location. Okay, so let's get started. So the, the first step is in cloning the repository. Okay, this repository where you're seeing the the file. This is essentially on CloudX Lab Big Data Repository. So let's get started. How do you go to the console? There are multiple ways, but what we're going to follow is simple one. Go to my lab, click on web console, and then we will log into our web console. Okay, this is the web console and we are copy pasting the password, paste the password, and here we are. All right, now once we are logged in into this, we have to clone the repository. Okay, it says that the big data already exists because I have already cloned this repository, right? In case you have already cloned the repository, you go into this folder called big data and then run, run the second command. Okay, second command git pull origin master. Here you see ampersand ampersand, it means that this basically combines two commands, change the directory to this folder, as well as pull the latest version, okay? So either you can do both the things together or you can do uh, one thing at a time, okay? So let me just, uh, first we change the directory to big data, tilde here means this tilde, tilde means home directory, okay? So even if you don't give it, tilde slash, it will still go to this folder, okay? Now. Let me go back. Um, here we are saying git pull origin master. Git pull origin master means get me the latest code. So it got the latest code here. Now the next step is next step is to go to this folder where we have the scalar code and compile the code. Okay. So we change the directory here, and then we did the compilation of this code. So you can see here that. There is a build.spd. It contains the instructions on how to compile it. Okay, so here there is a there is a jar file and so on. Um, and, and this is the actual code. This is the actual code. I'll, I'll discuss it in a while while the compilation is happening. I'll discuss the code. Okay, now let's just do the compilation for now. Okay, so this SPT package is compiling the code and creating the creating the the jar file. Okay, creating the jar file. Jar file will be having the output of the compilation and it will store in in certain dist folder. Okay, so it's basically compiling it and the outcome will be stored somewhere. All right. Now, next next step is uh, I wanted to describe what's there in the this particular code. Let's go here and look at the code. I'm at the repository, GitHub repository. I can close one of the tabs because there are two of them are open. So this is the code of the Spark streaming, consuming the Spark streaming using the using the Spark API in Scala. 
So here, this is uh, the place where we are checking the number of arguments. Then what we are doing is we are creating the parameters to be given to, Ka to Kafka connection uh, string. And here we are consuming the arguments. These arguments are being assigned to three values, ZK quorum, consumer group, and topic. And afterwards, we are creating a conf object, the initial, initial entry point. After that, using the conf object, we are creating the streaming context. Afterwards, 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 okay. So the first thing we are doing here is creating the conf object. Conf object is the first object. We also call it configuration object. Using this configuration object, we are creating the entry point called SSE. Using this SSE, what we will be doing is we will be creating a direct stream of uh, creating a direct, direct stream which where we are saying that consume the data from this topic along with these parameters and then and then here we are saying that whatever data we got we can we extract the value of the data Afterwards, we are splitting the data based on the space using flat map and then we are converting that into key value and then and then and then word count using the reduce by key. And afterwards we are printing it. Now nothing will get started till the till this point. When we do sse.start, only then the process will get started and then here we are waiting for termination. Alright, so let's take a look at it, look at the entire process. Okay, so we were here. We were here. Let me go back. Okay, so we are done with this. We went through this, we understood the code, what it does. And afterwards, now let's interact with Kafka. First of all, we are going to set the path. Every time you want to interact with Kafka, either you have to give the fully qualified name of every binary, or you can just put it in the put it in the path. Okay. So here we're saying that append the path uh, of Kafka binaries to our normal path so that it discovers them automatically. Also, by this time, uh, it has finished the compilation. And this is the outcome of our compilation. Okay, this is the outcome of our compilation. Now, moving ahead here, you can see uh, this is where we are creating a topic. Now, the topic that I want to create is this. Okay, with my my login name into it. So here we are saying Kafka topic create and Zookeeper is localhost two one eight one. And replication factor is one, partition is one, and topic is this. Okay, so here, here what we are doing is uh, we are trying to create this topic. All right. For me, it says that the topic already exists. If you want to delete it, you can delete uh, the topic, but I do not want to delete it. For me, it's okay that we have existing topic. All right. So, uh, in case you want to delete it, you can just use dash dash delete, and it will work fine. Now, coming back to it, uh, we have now created this topic successfully, okay? Now, uh, we want to check whether the topic has been created or not, which we can easily check using this command, okay? So, let's just go and you should see your own topic here. Right, Sandeep Giri 9034 test. This one has been marked for deletion. This one is the one that is still existing. Now, coming back to where we were, now we have set up our basic things. We are, we are, we are done with checking out the code, compiling it, as well as we are done with creating the, creating the Kafka topic. The next step is to interact with Kafka. Okay. To interacting with Kafka, you need to launch Zookeeper client. Why? Because we want to find out 
about the Kafka servers or Kafka brokers. Okay, Kafka servers and Kafka brokers are the same thing. So, this information is stored at this place. Okay, this place. You can say ls brokers IDs because all the brokers interact with Zookeeper, which is a centralized centralized service, and inform about their presence. Okay, these are ephemeral nodes. If a if a broker goes down, it'll get this. It'll get it'll get killed. Okay, so let me just show you uh, if it is a really uh, if ephemeral nodes. So you can see that this is um, basically get this information, and you can see ephemeral owner is non-zero. If it was not ephemeral, if it it was a normal node, the ephemeral ephemeral owner will be zero. Okay. So these are ephemeral nodes, meaning that as and when brokers come in, these nodes are created by the brokers. And in case brokers are killed or something happened, these nodes disappear. These ephemeral nodes disappear automatically. This way, it keeps a registry of existing running brokers. So we had we had how many how many brokers? Two, three, and four. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say two, right? So here you can see that this is the end point. Okay, this is the end point. C X L N and so on, and then there is a C X L N four. For you, for you, it could be different. We could also try some other broker. Okay, one zero zero three. This is running on the C X L N one, right? And similarly, you could try the four one. This is running on this. All right. So this is uh, good enough. Now moving ahead. Okay, this we have already set up, so we don't need to do anything else here. What we need to do though is um, create a producer. Okay, this is where we are creating a producer, Kafka console producer. Uh, but for that, we need to exit the Zookeeper. Okay, we have exited the Zookeeper, and now we have launched the producer or we, we can do one more thing let this console bit here let's just launch another console this is the console okay and in this console what we're going to do is we're going to first log in okay all right so on this console we are going to do production production of messages and on this console we are going to consume the messages Okay, so let's, uh, since we are logged in into a new console, we need to export this uh, path again. And uh, then we're going to, we're going to launch this. You remember that there was CXLN4. In case your host is different, just mention that, mention that here. Okay, in case your host is different, mention that here. So, so you can change that. Okay, you can change it before running it, like, yeah. Since I've copied the enter, so it automatically runs. In case you don't copy the enter, enter, uh, it won't run automatically. Now, here we are, and uh, let's say we are typing some messages like this. Okay, this is the producer, this is the producer, this is the producer, and I produce some messages. I go back to the previous terminal, right? So right now we have two terminals. One is a producer, other is a consumer. Now just to check whether the messages are being produced, I am picking the next command. In case you are using a different topic name, ideally you should use a different topic name, probably your login name, okay? And there, there, let's just consume that message from my topic. So it says that these are the messages that have been produced okay now is the next step okay to come out of this uh, consumer we can press ctrl c okay now is the time whereby we will launch this stream okay we have already uh, gone to this folder in case you are not in this folder run it again you will go to this correct folder and afterwards since we have already cleaned and did the package in case you have not cleaned above or, or created the package, you can do that now. 
Next step is to do the Spark Summit. Okay, let's just try Spark Summit. Okay, so you can see that it, ha it has launched it. Okay, it has launched the uh, Spark Streaming whereby it's connecting to the local Zookeeper and the topic is Sandeep Giri 9034 and it is consuming from the beginning. Okay, let's try producing some messages. Okay, and I'm going to just paste whatever I was doing earlier. Okay, you can see that it has produced these messages. Okay, it has produced these messages that I've just copy pasted. Okay, let me produce a little bit more messages here. So on the second terminal, I'm creating the messages. On the first one, I am consuming those messages. Let me just consume this more, uh, produce more messages. I'm just pasting mindlessly. Now you can see that it has done the word count here. All right, so, so I hope this uh, was clear enough to you, okay? And uh, you can, in case you are from Python background, you can follow the second tutorial available in the same folder, this one for Python.